Hello, and welcome to Ned's Journal here on Black Box Online Radio. Every Monday, I do an episode about the Zodiac Killer, and on Wednesdays this year, I added a regular segment about Jack the Ripper, and I wanted to use this episode as an opportunity to share some of the observations about how Jack the Ripper inspired the Zodiac Killer. This is one theory that I fully endorse, subscribe, promote, and just want to discuss more and more because I believe that the Zodiac Killer of the 1960s was using Jack the Ripper as a template or a model or even a blueprint, if you will. And some of the obvious similarities between the two serial killers are that, firstly, there are letters that were sent in by either the killers or someone pretending to be the killer. So you have homicides plus some bragging about it in letter forms that are mailed to the media. And not only are they talking about the news, but also mocking members of the investigation teams. But I think there's some more technical issues with this um, particular theory. And for starters, the murder of Rose Milet occurred on December 20th of 1888. And the first Zodiac killer crime occurred on December 20th of 1968. 80 years to the day, and I'm really surprised that this one isn't more widely discussed. Perhaps it's because Rose Milet is not a confirmed victim of Jack the Ripper, and I have an episode about here on this channel, and of course I invite you guys to like, subscribe, visit some links in the description box, including buymeacoffee.com, which allows you to make a donation to help and support the show, and anybody who makes a donation will get a shout-out on Zodiac Monday. But one thing that I am curious about, as opposed to endorsing, is the Ripper crime started on August 31st of 1888, and they culminated on November 9th of 1888. There are five canonical murders, and the Zodiac also has five canonical murders, but after the murder of Mary Kelly on November 9th of 1888, there, anything after that is just a possibility in terms of Ripperology, including the murder of Rose Milet on December 20th. Now, if the Zodiac Killer was trying to use Jack the Ripper as a template, it would appear way too obvious to choose a date like November 9th or August 31st or September 30th, dates of confirmed Ripper activity, to just add a little bit of um, personal touch to the subject, but still using the Ripper as a model, choosing a date like December 20th of 1968 to commit the Lake Herman Road murders would make sense, and it could even be possible that the Zodiac Killer genuinely believed that Jack the Ripper had committed the murder of Rose Milet, and there are other um, pre-Ripper crimes, post-Ripper crimes, and the most famous pre-Ripper crimes perhaps would be the murders of Emma Smith and Martha Tabram, and both of these serial killer stories truly morph into serial killer legends where five people are murdered and then there is this belief that the person responsible for those five murders was also responsible for a host of other crimes throughout the entire decade and even beyond, sometimes spanning two, three, even four different decades. But with the Zodiac Killer, it's also um, interesting to note that it's widely accepted that Sherry Jo Bates, who was murdered on October 30th of 1966, was a Zodiac Killer victim. I don't believe she was, but a lot of people accept that. And she was stabbed numerous times, and she was slashed, and very, very vicious crime. But the murder of Martha Tabram, a pre-Ripper crime, also had the victim stabbed numerous times and cut up and but not mutilated in the same way as the other canonical Ripper victims minus Liz Stride. So you can see how the story has morphed into somewhat of a serial killer legend. And I don't say legend with any respect, zero respect in fact, but I just want to point out how these types of facts can be twisted or unraveled to the point where people are almost adding on fictitious layers because they're trying to tell a more convincing story. And not only do, did Jack the Ripper and the Zodiac Killer both commit a series of homicides and mail-in letters, but these 
the first Jack the Ripper letter was the Dear Boss letter, which came after the second crime, the murder of Annie Chapman. The first Zodiac letter, which was mailed on July 31st of 1969, came after the second crime, after the Blue Rock Springs shooting, which saw the murder of Darlene Farron. And I think that this goes to show us that either the Zodiac Killer was copying Jack the Ripper or imitating Jack the Ripper, or the only alternative possibility is that someone had committed two sets of crimes and that that was just the opportune moment to write letters to the press because before that nobody knew who the killer was and nobody would have been aware of the killer's activities, almost like building up some type of very sick and twisted serial killer resume, so to speak, presenting oneself as a serial killer as opposed to simply a murderer involved in a single event. But that requires a little bit of guesswork. Some other examples of how Jack the Ripper could have been the inspiration for the Zodiac Killer would be that after the Zodiac's third crime, the Lake Berryessa stabbing, on September 27th of 1969, there was a message written on Brian Hartnell's Carmen Gia on his Volkswagen, like written on the door. And after the third Jack the Ripper crime, there was a message that was written on a wall, which is referred to as the Goulston Street Graffito. And, of course, the Zodiac Killer wasn't going to write a message on the wall at Lake Berryessa after the stabbing of Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard because it was at a park, a lakeside. I mean, buildings would not have been easily available. But what was available was the car that Brian Hartnell had driven to the park. And after the fourth crime, the Zodiac's fourth crime, the murder of Paul Stein on October 11th of 1969, the Zodiac killer cut off a piece of Paul Stein's shirt, cut it up, and mailed it in to multiple, with multiple Zodiac letters. Now, Jack the Ripper cut out the kidney of the fourth victim, Catherine Eddowes, cut it in half, and mailed it in with the From Hell letter. And so, of course, the Zodiac Killer isn't going to cut out Paul Stein's kidney, because for starters, he probably didn't know how. Secondarily, it would have been extremely risky and gruesome. Paul Stein was a taxi driver, and the Zodiac simply didn't have time to do that after the taxi had pulled over to the side of the street. I mean, Jack the Ripper was operating in dark alleys, so to speak, and less likely to have been interrupted scenarios, especially with the murder of Mary Kelly. But, I mean, that just goes to show that a piece of hard evidence was taken from the crime scene and then mailed in with a correspondence to show some type of ownership, as well as also doing something very gruesome, grotesque, and getting people's attention. So, what do you think about these types of observations? Do you agree or disagree that the Zodiac Killer was using Jack the Ripper as a template? And what do you think about the theory that the Zodiac was trying to pick up where Jack the Ripper left off? Okay, so you have the murders of Emma Smith and Martha Tabram, and then the canonical Ripper crimes, and then the murder of Rose Milet on December 20th of 1968. Then, in the Zodiac's mind, he wants to pick up where the Ripper left off and commit the crimes from December 20th of 1968 into 1969. It's like from December 20th into a new cycle of Jack the Ripper. And, I mean, the Zodiac was absolutely less um, grotesque and vicious than Jack the Ripper, but what do you think about that particular observation? I confess that part is theoretical, that's more of a hypothesis, it's not even widely accepted, but also, what do you think about how Jack the Ripper and the Zodiac both wrote letters, Jack the Ripper and the Zodiac both left messages after the third crime and writing at the crime scene or nearby the crime scene, and Jack the Ripper and the Zodiac both mailed in uh, something that had been stolen from one of the victims and to, to, to signify ownership and also to taunt and mock the people who were investigating the cases. What do you think about those particular observations? Please put your ideas in the comment section down below. Even though I said that I endorse this particular theory, I also have to pay attention to some of the counter-arguments and the different interpretations of the evidence. Number one would be that Jack the Ripper only targeted women, 
and the Zodiac Killer very famously targeted males and females. Jack the Ripper only has three letters that are most likely attributed to him. The rest are rather accepted as forgeries. The Zodiac Killer has numerous accepted correspondences, and a reason for that is because the Zodiac Killer not only wrote letters, but also wrote cryptograms or ciphers, the 408 cipher, the 340 cipher, the 13, and the 32. So, Jack the Ripper was also absolutely more vicious than the Zodiac Killer, mutilating women beyond recognition, whereas the Zodiac Killer fired some gunshots and ran away, with the one exception of the Lake Berryessa stabbing, where the victims were tied up and the Zodiac stabbed them with a knife. It is my personal belief that the reason why the Zodiac Killer did that was he was imitating a different criminal, and he took inspiration from the 1966 uh, South Chicago townhouse massacre committed by Richard Speck, and there's some very specific pieces of uh, dialogue that were shared with the victims that sound like the words that Richard Speck said to the women from the townhouse massacre. So what do you think about any of these observations about how the Zodiac Killer is imitating or copying other criminals, particularly Jack the Ripper? Please put your ideas in the comment section down below. One more time, hit the like button and subscribe. Visit some links in the description box. Anybody can write the show at BlackBoxOnlineRadio at AOL.com. You can also get me on Facebook. My personal Facebook is in the description box. And there was always BlackBoxNid88 over on Instagram. And I will see you there for the bonus podcast. Until next time.